Well, it's a beautiful winter's day in Sydney, about 18 degrees. I haven't been for sale for about the last oh, three or four months, and that's because we've been in COVID lockdown. But I have spent the time doing some useful stuff on the boat, like repainting. So I thought I'd share some tips with you about painting a boat if you've never done it before, because I hadn't and I've learnt quite a lot. Kate Louise is 11 years old and she's never been repainted. And last summer, it was obvious she needed some love and attention. The decks and the cockpit were beginning to show checking where the paint cracks along the lines of the marine ply. So what paint to use? Now, marine paint is really expensive. There's no two ways about it. I could have gone a cheaper enamel paint, which is a one pot, but that would only last supposedly about three or four years. But if you go the two pot epoxy or polyurethane, that should last about 15. Chris Ellard, who's the son of Derek Ellard, the boat designer and builder in Queensland, he's built 12 boats himself from Sydney. He suggested I use an industrial paint called Houghton, which is Dutch. And industrial paints are a hell of a lot cheaper. Houghton's used for painting oil rigs and ships. So I contacted their agent in Sydney and said, well, which Houghton paint do I use? And he suggested a two-part epoxy base coat called Pengard. And then for the top coat, you use a two-pot polyurethane called Ultra Hard Top. And that's exactly what I did. First off, double masking all the areas you want to protect because it's very easy when you sand back to go through one layer of masking tape. I then started using 80 grit, 120 and then I think 180. Now last year you would probably noticed on the cabin roof there were bubbles and people said, what are the bubbles? Well, the previous owner had tungsten lights on the inside of the cabin. They got too hot and the heat had actually lifted the fiberglass coating on top of the roof. So the only way to fix that was to actually puncture the bubbles, fill it with epoxy and then sand it level and it looked fine. Also, I noticed the boards on the roof of the cockpit were also had a bit of a camber, so valleys were forming where the two boards joined and Chris suggested using two-part epoxy car body filler and that sanded off and looked really good as well. Then on to the painting. The two-part epoxy base coat went on really easily, it's quite thick. To measure it accurately at four to one, that's four parts of the base to one part of the hardener, um, I decided to use syringes and you can buy 60ml syringes from the chemist, they're about a dollar eighty each. You can use them once and if you clean them straight after you use them possibly twice, three times they tend to stick or break. Uh, so that way I could accurately measure up about 200ml or what I needed for that day. So I started off doing the decks first, secondly I did the cabin roof and then finally the cockpit. I've still got the cockpit floor to do. I used 5mm mohair rollers. After the base coat I sanded back and then put another coat on and let that dry and that was probably a day or so. And then uh, went for the ultra hard top. And after two coats of the top coat, I then sanded it back slightly and was ready to put on the deck grip. Now Chris gave me some intergrain deck grip, which is basically a filler you add to the paint. But it's a very fine powder, so it's, it's not too abrasive on your knees. Because it looks more professional if you've got a strip or board around the outside, and that's what I did using masking tape. But remember to pull the masking tape off before the paint dries, because you get a much crisper finish that way. And this tip is really good. Hardener doesn't last very long. It only has a shelf life, I think, of about somewhere between three and six months because even though the polyurethane and the epoxy are both chemical reactions it's air that sets off the hardener so to stop air getting into the hardener tin when you've finished using it put some cling film on top of the surface of the hardener left in the tin and make sure there's no air there and then put the lid on and then put the whole thing in a clip lock bag that way you've got three ways of stopping air getting to the surface of the hardener and it should extend the hardener life. I'm happy with the finish. Uh, I think it looks pretty good compared to what was there before. Uh, it's not as hard as I thought it was going to be. 
uh, and I've still got quite a bit of paint left over. Can't wait to go sailing again, probably Mile Lakes or even Lake Macquarie. Just hanging out to get on the water again. There you go, there's some tips about painting a boat. Hope it helps you out and hope to see you on the water soon.